Hi, this is Scott Kilos, ER6, Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at some useful accessories that TID Radio recently sent me for evaluation. Uh, I've got this really nice little speaker mic here, which I'm going to review in a separate video because I need to record some audio samples. But they also sent me these two antennas that you see mounted on the TDH3 and TDH8. The first one is going to be on the TDH8. We've got our uh, TD771 whip antenna. And on the H3, we've got a little TD805S stubby antenna. So the first one I want to take a look at, uh, because it's going to be the one that resonates the most with you guys. Eh, resonates. See what I did there? Is the uh, It's going to be the TD771 whip antenna. So this is a 14.9 inch long dual band antenna designed to work with or work in the VHF UHF spectrum. Of course, it works uh, fantastic for VHF uh, um, two meter, and then in UHF it works great for 70 centimeter, but also GMRS works pretty good there as well. So it's a very versatile antenna at a really low low cost. I'll leave links in the description on this, by the way. Um, so. One of the first things that comes up anytime you're going to be presenting an antenna is people are going to ask about SWR readings. So I did do an SWR test on this. Let me talk real quick about the SWR testing methodology I used. I don't usually film those, mainly because I, I am fed up with arguing with people uh, about how you should properly test for SWR. I do understand that if you want to see what the true maximum potential of an antenna is, of course you're going to bolt your antenna to a, a sheet metal ground plane. You're going to use LMR 400 feed line. Um, there's all kinds of things you're, you're going to do to get the, you're, you're going to take all of the, any adapters or connectors out of the chain. Um, and I get that you're going you're gonna to see what the true absolute potential SWR of that, that antenna is. But how does any of that transfer over in, in any practical term to how you actually use the antenna on the radio? The antenna is bolted to the radio. It's, you're not carrying around a sheet metal ground plane when you're transmitting with this. So the testing methodology I use represents a more a more practical real world test of the antenna. So what I do is I take this analog RS40 watt meter and using this connector here I literally bolt it to the top of the radio just like so. And then from there I attach the antenna. So the only thing that's really changed is I've inserted this device between my antenna connection and my radio connection. I then hold the radio as I would normally hold it in my hand near my head and I key down and then I check the results there. Now that is not the most perfect scientific result. However, it is the one that most closely matches the way the antenna is actually going to be used on the radio under real world conditions. So that's where I got my, my testing results, and those are the results I'm going to report. I'm not going to argue the issue even a little bit in the comments section. So the results I got was when I keyed down on, uh, in VHF on 2 meter, the needle barely, barely moved. Um, which is excellent. That's almost a perfect impedance match, uh, which surprised me, quite frankly. Uh, now, when I moved to UHF, and the reason it's surprising, by the way, is the cost of the antenna. But when I moved to UHF, it went up just a little bit. It went up to about 1.3, which is normal. When you move from one band to another on a dual band or tri band or quad band antenna, you're going to see a shift in the uh, in the SWR. I should also report that I was testing on high power. So I was putting a full 10 through this thing um, because your SWR readings will also change depending on the output power you're applying to the signal. So um, yeah, it was at full power. Um, so decent results and on GMRS about the same uh, actually as the 70 centimeter uh, right within the same ballpark. So SWR was good. Now when it comes to the remainder of my testing there's no real scientific method or at least I don't possess the tools to scientifically measure whether or not there's a marked improvement in terms of reception or transmission capabilities. This is purely comes down to an anecdotal test. 
And I do that quite simply by just using the radio. So I've used the radio to both both transmit and receive. My signal reports on transmission were fine. Um, uh, nothing remarkable. I was I, on people that I normally come through full quieting. I'm still coming through full quieting. Um, and that one really is kind of a kind of a hard one to test because how do you determine um, if there's any markable improvement in terms of your your transmit area and and that one's always hard to nail down so I wish I had a better answer for you there but I will say good results so I, I have no complaints it worked just fine now reception that's where you can kind of tell where things are a little different you can do it a couple of different ways you can have a control radio going in the room so that you can listen to both radios and for instance if one picks up a signal if the other doesn't well that would obviously be an issue right um, and I did that and I, I found that in comparison to other radios with similar antennas it stayed right up there with them. It was receiving the same signals with the same degree of clarity that my FT60 that I had a, uh, a diamond SRH, uh, what is it, the SRH77CA. Um, it too had a whip antenna and they were right side by side receiving with about the same degree of clarity and precision. So again, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive given the price of this antenna. So there will be links in the description to see that price. But this thing is coming in really inexpensively. So that's one of the biggest points of attraction for me on this. Oftentimes I'll see something priced like this and I'll just, you know, I'll just avoid it going, there's no way that can be any good. Well, yeah, there is. Um, it, these things are pretty darn good. And when it comes to antennas, one of the things that if you want to have a, a moment of where you get really upset with yourself, go spend $47 on a, on a whip antenna and then within two days drop it off the side of a table and watch that antenna fold in half. And you will get really super depressed over that. Um, I tell people now, especially the new guys, don't get too attached to your antennas because if you use them the way the radio, if you use the radio the way it's supposed to be used, you're going to bend or break one of those antennas before long. So being able to find an antenna that can get the job done but do so at a really low price so I can buy a whole bunch of them, that's great because if I can if I can have you know five or six of these things laying around uh, for when I need to replace them, that's going to make me a happy happy boy. So uh, that's another really attractive feature about this antenna. So that kind of wraps it up for that one. But I can recommend on the TD seven seven one. That's pretty good stuff. So it's uh, it's going to have a permanent home here on this TDH eight from now on. Now moving on to the stubby. Now with the stubby. Um, mixed results here and that's you're always going to have mixed results when you get to a stubby antenna i talk i've talked a lot about stubby antennas and when i do i explain that i use these almost exclusively for monitoring i do not rely on the stubby antennas for for transmission it will do it but it will only do it at a very short distance when you go to these stubby antennas something you have to understand is this antenna is very 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 compromised now you can make it receive amazingly well but what you can't make it do is form a proper waveform off of the antenna to get any distance out of it um, you can take in that that information but sending it out is always going to be problematic because you're dealing with basically a giant coil inside here and it doesn't make for the best antenna for transmission and that's the same case with this one um, not only is it that um, it's a compromised antenna. The SWR also is going to blow your mind when you when you test this. And the SWR in this is fairly high. Now it's not it's not in the excessive area, but if you see a 1.5 to 1.6 off of this, don't be surprised uh, because I did. And what that means is you're getting a lot of a lot of signal being reflected back into the radio, which is not terrific. You're not getting that much energy out of the antenna. Basically, it's just a, a big uh, a big choke point for your signal so it's not going to be terrific for that but for a small event or a small area so if everybody you needed to talk to is within a, a 100 yard um, 
circumference around you. You could get by with one of these little stubby antennas. It'll work just fine. But if you're going to try to hit repeaters with this, give up on that idea altogether. It's not going to work for that. But as a reception antenna and how I use these, especially on these smaller radios, screw one of these stubbies on here, knock the belt clip off the back, and this fits nicely into a cargo pocket. So when I'm at a, uh, at a boring family event that I don't want to be at, I can pop it out of my pocket, turn it on, and, and have, a little, have a little radio time um, without being too obvious about it. Uh, so they're great for that. Uh, and again, if they're great for if you're transmitting at a short distance around your property, for instance, they're fine there. Just do not think you're going to get anything, even a, prox even a fraction of the normal distance you're going to get with a factory antenna. You're not going to get that with one of these stubbies. It's just not going to happen. I know I keep saying that, but I really want to emphasize that point because I see a bunch of people screwing these things on and then complaining that they can't hit the repeaters. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know exactly why. So um, it, it is for a very specific niche purpose that these antennas exist. So if that fits your parameters, terrific. Now, I still say if you've got a TDH3, get a couple of these because it is kind of cool uh, to be able to thread that on, throw one of these into a cargo pocket and have a radio handy. It, I would, in fact, I would recommend buy yourself a TDH3 and put one of these on here and reserve it specifically for that purpose. Um, at least that's what I do. That's kind of the role that my TDH3 fills at the moment. But I've got another one coming in, so I, I have other plans for that. I'm going to start messing around with some of that uh, firmware hacking. But that is uh, pretty much it for these two antennas. Um, I'm going to leave links in the description. As I mentioned, the, uh, the cost on these antennas is amazingly low. They appear to be currently on sale. So... Um, uh, Click those links and, and check that out. I don't I don't make anything off of it, but uh, uh, I'm just presenting you with a couple of options. And the cool thing is, they're TID radio options, so um, you can use them to accessorize your TID TDH3 or TDH8. So with that, I will bring it to a close. Thank you for watching and are listening. This is Scott Kilo Sierra 6 Delta Alpha Yankee from Visalia, California. Have a wonderful day.